just seemed to have an extra gear that they could go to, which FM didn't really show us a whole lot on. So, you know, based on that, Brod, do you think we're going to see a 2-0 here, or have FM got something in the tank? Well, I mean, considering FM didn't pick up their choice, I'd, I'd have to give it to her at the moment. I'd have to say Kaz have probably looked like the stronger team overall in this tournament, and just the fact that, yeah, FM lose on their choice sort of sort of decides it for me in my head at least. This is probably going to be a 2-0 series. Kaz will probably take this one. I'm assuming we're going to be seeing a scoreline. Again, not too one-sided because FM have had some um, standout moments. So probably something around like a 16-9, 16-10, if I had to guess. Yeah, that's not a uh, bad, uh, bad way of looking at I think probably along the same kind of line. I guess one thing that uh, FM have in their arsenal is that in the Elzinho and in Hudson G, they've got a couple of Orpers that can, you know, potentially have an impact either in the mid window or just floating about the map. You know, probably not in the same way that we saw Crucial have uh, for reason at various points when he's had the Orp up in hand. They're not quite as dynamic between them as such, but you know that. They're not um, one-trick ponies with the AWP, either of them, and you know, it could be an interesting dynamic going forward. But then, by the same token, Jacob can do some damage with the AWP in his hand as well. So, you know, plenty of uh, dynamics that you can look for. And, you know, Fry, the performance that he put in for FM, dropping a 30 bomb, he was the standout player. Are we going to see the same thing again? You know, it, and for Orglis, it took Pulse to kind of step up and try and drag his team through uh, a little bit. And it worked out quite well uh, for them when someone steps up their game just a little bit above the rest. It kind of forces everyone else to lift a little bit and maybe we'll see some of that as we're into the early stages in FM. They've got jungle control. They took the mid and you know, we're given you know, fairly free reign of that by Kaz, but maybe this is all part of the plan. Let them have it and wait for them to come onto the site. Pretty much play retake as Robin. He manages to get up on top and he takes down uh, Stanley. Chak has got a play and what a shot that is. He didn't have to make it quite that good, I don't think, because it's a bit of a trash point when you've got to push through, but it does end up being a clean sweep 5-0. And Kaz take the first round on the board. I'm not quite sure how they've managed that, to be honest, because the CT setup looked a little peculiar from what we're used to. But by sitting way back like they did, it wasn't possible for someone to go and get trapped and isolated and taken out that way. So, you know, I think very well executed in the end. Yeah, I'm not sure if they knew something that we didn't, but that was um, that was just stunning. The fact they allowed them to take that control of uh, Window and jungle but then they just play it so they've got one man on site watching for anybody that tries to come out so obviously they can negate they can negate the push towards a site that way and then they've got a couple of players ct to make sure they can't wrap around to b and it's well as you saw it worked out perfectly they managed to cut off the rotates before they even happened and then the men on the site on b they did their job they took everybody else out so kaz we see them in great form right from the start and realistically i doubt we're going to be seeing that stopping anytime soon although this is fm's chance to do a little bit of damage. They've got those tech nines, they've got the armor, they're gonna be in a good place if they want to be, but they still don't seem to be able to find anything at the moment. Robin gonna be finding one, Som does respond right back, but it's just now how effectively they can trade out. And at the moment, it actually doesn't look too bad. They're managing to keep up. They're managing to keep at least in vaguely even numbers, if nothing else, doing a lot of economic damage. And if Som can find one more hit, they're gonna be in a great place indeed, but instead it's gonna be Jake to find the frag and Fry is the last left alive. Now, if you had to pick somebody to be the last alive, I said it would be Fry, but no utilities in the P90 work, and I doubt it's going to end all too well. Now, it, it just kind of seems like with these SMGs, now they've changed the game sounds, it is, well... And they kind of sound like the pea shooters that they are and Robin you know, is hammering that weapon into pretty much anything he could find and was tagging FM players but the bars just weren't moving almost and you know, that makes it a little difficult and sometimes when you've got pistols you know they can have a little more firepower than the SMGs do and you know it kind of gets balanced out by the advantage that you can run and gun and Fry is going to save one of those weapons it's going for the uh, Pro 90 which is going to try and keep and, and do what he can but you see as a result of saving that he has uh, zero dollars in the bank so really needs to start making that pay pick up a couple if he can 200 no, actually, the P90 doesn't have that 200% kill bonus like a lot of the other SMGs, etc. So you know, he's got a bit of uh, work to do with that to get his bankroll back up and building. Needs a couple of frags here, I think, or it's just going to slow things down uh, more than anything. But 
I'm going to be favouring that. You see, Jacob, he's only got the Tech 9. Uh, MP7 in the hands of Boaster. So, see what they can do with that. Going to be Glocks all around for FM, other than that, Pro 90. Going to see if they go for anything too quick. And they are going again for this A site. It seems to be their main choice so far. That nade from Robin should be effective. Take Som down to about half HP and Stan going the same way. So, the plant does come in. There's 800 bucks in their account, but they're going to try and chase from these uh, CT steps, and Robin's already got one, going to work the angles, gets the second, probably going to get the third, and his position will be known, but Neil Zinio, he's actually got two from there, and Som could do some damage as well, Som, no, he's taken down 1v1, Neil Zinio, his position will be known, fake diffuse comes in, Shaq has a kit in hand, so needs uh, five seconds to finish that one off, and looks like he might just have to sit on it now, Neil Zinio has the chance to chase him, and doesn't, you know, I think that's a couple of opportunities that Shaq could have sat on that, does get it in the end anyway. Yeah, there were a few times that he could have probably just chilled out sat on it, but he chose to play it cautiously. It was very close indeed. Still manages to come out on top, and that's what's important for them at the moment. Um, I'm still trying to figure out what Fry's logic was um, with regards to the P90, because it means in this round, where his team are going to be buying up, he's going to be still stuck on that Tech 9. I mean, maybe it was the difference maker in the round. Maybe... To him, it was, okay, I'm going to keep this P90. We're going to try for the bomb plant in a second. Then at least you guys can all buy up. But it just still feels a bit off. Fortunately, it works out in the fourth. <laughs> the rest of his team are going to be fine. He's just going to be on a Tech 9. And, well, it's not as good as it could be. It's not as bad as it could be. It's basically about as average around as you can have. And they're going to be a little bit weaker as a result of it. At the moment, they are dropping. Although... Actually, HUD's G goes down. They managed to start things back up on the right foot again. So it's actually going to be the CTs having issues at the moment. It's not going to be helped by the fact that Robin takes out Jacob. Robin and Cryptic's now the last two left alive and both trying to enter from jungle and connect uh, respectively against uh, the entire might of FM Esports. The three AK is going to be a hugely dangerous factor here if they're going to be taking any fights at all. But Cryptic's manages to start it off early still. They feel that maybe it's a little bit too much to deal with and decide that they're just going to fall away into apartments instead, not take the risk, not take the fight. Allow FM to secure a round and try and come back into it in the next, and they do have the money to do that. With two players staying alive, we can see drops coming in potentially, and they should be able to get something out in the next round. Whether it's going to be FAMASs, whether it's going to be lacking utility, that's still sort of up in the air. It really depends what they want to go for, but it might be enough to contest, and if they can take FM down here... Well, they put themselves back in a very good position indeed. Yeah, for sure. Very unfortunate. I think that name is Jacob. I was watching him and he had the frag lined up to take down one player and probably could have flicked up to apartments to get the second as well, but instead catches that nade perfectly. And, you know, I think the uh, new NFL season is pretty much ready to kick off. I think it might be the Hall of Fame game tonight. So uh, if he wants to change a career and with catching like that, he could be a, a pretty decent wide receiver, but I'm sure he's going to stick with it for the time being uh, with this lineup and, and just try and push on. As you say, there's a, a bit of cash there sitting around them to be putting buys together. And it's a bit scrubby, but you know, not necessarily a problem, especially if the action tends to come over towards this A site where they've got uh, the biggest uh, sort of collection of their weapons. If you like, Son up in the apartment's going to be trying to work a pick. You know, Cryptix is just going on the peak uh, for the time being with his M4. You know, might want to just sit back and play a little more passive ball for the push to come in. Let's check. Bang has a chance to make a frag and does. Boaster gets one as well. And they're trading a Boaster. He's doing the damage with that M4. 3-2. He's caught over at Fireboxes now. But you know, all in all, this is going quite well uh, for Kaz. And they've got a chance to try and get into a better position. Ready knowing that these guys in the next 45 seconds have to get this bomb plant down. And Jake him. They might not have spotted him towards the CT steps. They've got to be careful though. Well, he's got to be careful. Because they will be looking in that direction. And it's quite easy to get isolated. And you see straight away. You know, you can see... Uh, both looking in his direction. You know, decent damage done. Hunts G down to 49 points of health. You know, no kit on either of these guys. Well, actually, Cryptic's had the kit, but he's been dropped. So, Jacob, what can he do? Well, he doesn't need to worry about the kit because he's taken both of them down. Nice work, actually. Both coming into the site from different angles. That was enough for a distraction. Jacob cleans up. And uh, Kaz putting a mini reset onto FM. And, you know, even though that's a scrubby bite, they're able to bring it home. Nice work, guys. The issue for me at the moment is that mini reset is not going to be quite what it seems. Um, obviously, definitely not a bad thing for Cats to be doing, but when you actually look at the economy that that's sort of set up, it means that both of them are going to be able to get in one more bite. Neither of them are going to be perfect, and actually FM's is slightly weaker, but they're still in a position where they can do a lot of damage to Kaz. And with Kaz's economy as 
sort of unstable as it is this early in the game, it's a great chance for FM to come straight back in, try and destabilize the CTs and gain some ground that way. So really going to be coming down to what we see in this round. And initially, it's going to be trades favoring Kaz. Mac and Robin playing quite a piece. Stan only managed to up one for his team. But Neil Zeno comes in, finds Boaster, and forces the man in CT back. Chak unable to do anything with that FAMAS whatsoever. And so Kaz... They're forced to put their defense on ice. FM now have full control of the site. The bomb's still not gone down. But they they have full reign. Anything Kaz wants to do now hinges on them being able to fight their way back in. And realistically, at this point, it looks like they're just waiting for FM to make the first move. They want to hear that bomb go down. They want to have as much information as possible. And that is basically the least they could get. Whereas FM, they want to see if they can probe. They want to see if they can find anybody skulking around before any of that's happened or... At the very least, maybe try and confuse them by taking their time. Finally, though, it looks like we are going to be seeing the bomb go down. And from that point, it's anybody's guess. A three versus three retake is definitely not an impossible situation, especially if they enter from different angles and, um, well, use the utility they have. Jacob not going to be needing it initially, though, just straight onto Fry there. Neil Zeno going to be seeing what he can do to counter, and it does look like it's going to be one of those sort of rounds, trades back and forth consistently. At least one of the positions known on the footsteps should give away the other one. Cryptics, he must have the knowledge by this point. Neil Zeno is down. It's the last man left alive. Huds G trying to do it for his team, and he still manages to find one. I thought they knew the position. Now all on Jack, and he's going to be jumping all around the boxes, seeing what he can do, and he finally finds the frag, but the bomb's ticking down, and he can't get to it. They lose the round off the back of him not knowing where the bomb was planted. Yeah, I think a couple of times that position of the bomb, one issue. Other issue, Cryptics took way too long to get the position of Hudge G and then to actually take him out, which didn't happen. And you know, it was just too much uh, of an ask in the end for Chak, who put uh, three frags onto the board and added that to his tally. But it wasn't quite enough. And you know, for Kaz, they've kind of misfired on a couple of times where they've dropped these two rounds. And, you know, they're back up against it as far as their finances go. FM, you know, they were the weaker of the two buys and in a bit of trouble. And now they've got the plant, they've got the round win as well. And they did a lot of uh, economic damage to the uh, Kaz players, dropping four of them in that battle as well. So, you know, not the best situation for them. And, you know, there's still plenty of time for Kaz to really lock this one down. But you'd expect they're probably not going to bring this one home. So, you know, four to three. And, you know, you're not too far away from uh, putting in a good situation together if you're getting like five, six rounds Mirage T side. Yeah, that's uh, very much workable. Robin tried to do some damage with the Tech-9. Does pick up Neil Zinio, so maybe he's going to push through and pick up that AK at some point. But the push is now coming towards the beast. They've got to work fast if they want to do it. As he gets cryptics as he enters. Stan takes down Jacob from the site in the kitchen. Is an area of contention. Looks like they drop away from it, whoever that was rotating in. shaq has got the AK, so he's going to be you know, the, the biggest firepower as such for this uh, Kaz side. They want to go forward, but I think he's going to go for the save and, and leave these last two players to just try and recover what they can. Well, I mean, you'd sort of expect that to be happening. He wants to hold on to that AK. He wants to be taking it through to the next round because... Their economy is shot for all intents and purposes. You've got a couple of hundred dollars on a couple of them, but past that, it's going to be in the 50s. So, realistically, everything they can gain in this round is going to be a huge, huge benefit. And Robin manages to find at least one more. Uses that tech line wonderfully. Grabs another frag and is now just falling away, hoping somebody else presents themselves to have their heads taken off. It's unfortunate for Kaz that FM managed to pick up the round, but they still do damage. They still show that even when on the pistols, they're a threat. It's just they're now going to have to prove in this round that they're a threat once again because, well, they're not going to be able to get anything up on three of the players. So the Tech Nines and Deagle's going to have to do some work for the second time in a row. Yeah, you wouldn't put it past them. They've managed it before, so the chances they can manage it again, especially if they lock the sights down in the correct way and just sit back and, and wait for the attacks to come in. You know, also... You could try and get up close, but you've got to be careful that you're not swarmed in there and you kind of got to do your damage while you can. And, you know, even if you are in one of those positions, if you only get one frag out of it and then you trade it out, that's not really the best situation either. You'd rather have your life available to help on the retake effort and, and give the site up, perhaps. So, you know, just something they can start to think about as to whether it's worthwhile or whether it's better to be a little more patient perhaps you've seen a few successful retakes for Kaz you know, a couple of rounds ago 
they weren't able to bring it home and uh, Neil Zinho able to pick up Foster really quickly so again they've got uh, access to the A site control of it if you like and, I mean, it's down to them to set the pace as to whether they want to plant, drop out towards A, that kind of thing. You know, plenty of options, plenty of time, and the plant now does come in. Uh, Jack boosting his teammate over the top, see if he can pick up a frag from there. Maybe get the angle on the plant as Jacob able to get Hudge G from behind. So he's going to cause some problems as they're coming on that angle now. Fry gets two. Jack, though, gets one to fire back, and he is able to pick up Stan from the double stack. The fuse could be on if they want to go for this one. They might not know that both players are coming in from the jungle, and one smoke might be enough to lock them out. And Jack, what a shot that is! I don't know if he got tracer fire. He must have done. But Jacob now just has to be a human shield. Just distract long enough for that defuse to come in and Kaz, the goalkeeper buying Tech Nines is working better than the rifles. I'm I'm speed I'm still trying to get over that shot there. That was a thing of beauty and it's potentially the shot that won them the round as well so it's gonna be even more important to their team at least for that one reason and it, it allows Kaz to pull back out into the lead five to three or back out the lead in a convincing manner at the, at the very least. And also gives them the chance to establish themselves once more economically. At the moment, still a little bit rough around the edges, but with this round, with FM having the weaker buy, you've got to assume that there's a good chance they'll be able to put themselves on the board and in that process take FM back to the pistol, back to where they want them, um, into a position where they can essentially just dominate them for a little bit longer. Keep putting rounds on the board without losing too much, but this round is started off by FM. They don't want this to happen. Dan manages to find one. They're going to be flashing themselves out. And Zeno gets caught with it, but he doesn't lose his life just yet. He's going to be running about, tapping away with the Tech 9, but can't quite find the frag instead. That's up to Fry. We know Fry's capable, though. That's good. Stan going to be coming in next. Finds himself a second in the round, and Cash just don't seem to have a response at this time. The bomb now going down on the A site, and they were completely tricked into thinking it was B. So now it is going to have to be the retake, but they're going to have to be constantly aware of the fact that somebody was behind them, that Fry was on B site and can be a nuisance from elsewhere on the map. And indeed he is. Takes down Shaq with ease and leaves Jacob as the last man left alive. And in that position, what's he to do but save? No nades, an M4 armor, something worth saving. No pain even. Just get out of there. Hold on to your gun. Hope you can use it in the next round. And... Maybe have a little bit of a cry about the fact that you were in the perfect position to put your team back on the board, or at least your team were in the perfect position to put themselves back on the board. And FM managed to take it instead. Yeah, and trade it straight back. And again, you're thinking about how many rounds is enough rounds on T side. And I guess Mirage is a little tougher to predict than some because it can swing backwards and forwards. And I've been. Yeah, on the receiving end of drubbings on both CT and T side on a number of occasions on this map. And you know, also been involved in tense encounters that have gone backwards and forwards and only been decided with a round or two in it. And you know, it's kind of exciting that you do have a map which can play in so many different ways just depending on how it all goes through and you know, for these two teams it'd be nice to see someone really get a stranglehold on it as it is just backwards and forwards and no one really building a bankroll at this point. And, I mean, nice to see this start to develop and the Deagle not quite effective so far and Salm Fry and Hudge G able to clean up very quickly over towards the B site. Probably going to get a plant in and a good chance of a flawless victory. It's uh, Boaster and Shaq going to be trying to bring this thing home. Boaster, he's got himself an AWP, so automatically the thought is going to be, how can I get this thing safe? How can I get this to my team? Maybe try and lock down the mid. And he's holding an angle round about into the uh, sort of mid window. Out to the back. And she's maybe a little aggressive. And there we go. Som takes down Boaster straight away. Now, I'm not so sure I liked his position. But, you know, it was probably better than where he's taken now. And it was too easy for those two boys to get swarmed. You know, Som taken down. Bit of economic damage. But he can get a full rebuy in. Opportunity to save an AWP. And it goes begging. And Kaz are going to be stuck uh, back on, well, on recent form. You suggest they should buy Tech 9 so probably win the round. <laughs> Instead, though, they do decide they're just going to be sticking with their stock weapons on the majority of them. A couple of them deciding to upgrade. We've got a P250 and a Deagle on the board right now. And potentially Cryptic is going to be doing some damage, but apart from that, it does look like we're going to be seeing FM pull themselves into the lead here. A full hit orchestrated towards the A site by the terrorists, and every single one of the CTs away at B. So both teams just essentially avoiding each other at this point. Um, and that's quite amusing to see. We're going to see Robin 
Trying to get that through Shaq, trying to come as well, but unfortunately both of them are going to be cut short. One by fire, one by a hail of bullets. And it's just the round's over before it's begun. They're going to be trying to come up with their pistols, seeing what they can do in terms of finding some sort of damage, but it's not going to be good enough. Shaq's P250 not going to be doing damage at range. Cryptic's the only one to find a frag at this point, and... It's just a question, isn't it? How far can you actually get with these pistols? I can see them finding another two frags, maybe, but that'd be lucky, and it's never going to be the bomb. Well, the bomb plant, the defuse. Oh, see you later, Boaster. I thought he might have been able to get a bit of a ninja in there in the apps, but, you know, Neil Zinio, more than wise to that, able to take him down using the extra firepower of the Tech 9, and FM edges himself into the lead. So, first by. Uh, going to be coming in. First time we've seen a real full buy coming in from Kaz, I think. It's pretty much been, you know, a little scrubby. And, you know, actually for Chak. And he's got uh, armor. But uh, no helmet to go with it. Got himself an M4. No utility. So a super cheapy one from him. And how much that utility is needed? Well, that remains to be seen. I think a very useful thing to have straight away. And, you know, that flash and smoke over towards the A might have been enough draw a bit of utility in from these players but they don't commit to it for the time being which is uh, fair enough they want to hear some actual footsteps and, and maybe the sight of something get something tangible before they uh, make any uh, sharp reactions but talk about sharp reactions there's Price the frag on Jacob and he's got his second taken down Robin as well he's stepping into the mid window and you know Robin seems to be just a little too soft around about that mid and underpass and like he's got his second Oh, sorry. Got himself taken out on a couple of occasions. Cryptics, and he gets taken down to about half. That does, in the end, avenge two of his fallen brethren. He gets the frag on Fry. Chak able to take down Stan from outside the back of the window as well. So, and back to a three versus three. Cryptics and Chak uh, both taken down to half HP in the skirmish. And, and with 45 seconds left to go, there's still time for FM to decide where they want to work. For Kaz, well, they've got to make a choice. And they have got a player coming in from behind. That's Boaster, actually, that's gone ball with him. He's uh, into the mid. You know, drop a flash. And you know, just get himself the angle. And Som, I don't know how you pulled that off, Som. But you have. And fair play. Hutchie also went down in the meantime. So it's the two half HP players uh, of Kaz taking on Som. And it's like they're both going to face him one at a time. Som, super low HP. Kaz pick it up and it trades back again. It's... It's, it's weird. It's strange. It's interesting. But indeed, you're correct. Kaz do manage to come back and find themselves a six. What's uh, more interesting in my eyes is that's only the third they've managed to get an actual gun round territory. Before that, they managed to find themselves the pistol and the two conversions. So FM, realistically, have just been doing a huge job of putting themselves back on the board. And when you look at the amount of uh, rounds they managed to find bomb plants, and you can see why. All but two of the rounds after the initial three have had a plant in them. Uh, whether that's won them the round or whether it's been defused. It still shows what sort of caliber they're playing, or what sort of level they're playing at right now, as well as that... It explains a lot about how they're continuously able to get these buys out. And they're going to have another one here. Five AKs barreling down towards the B side. It's going to be up to Cryptics. And Jacob to deal with them. Robin finally comes in as well. But unfortunately, as he gets there, things start to get shut down. Stan and Som doing a great job of finding a few frags between themselves. And they leave Chak as the last man left alive. He's going to be taken out. He finds the bomb. Has to hit the headshot on the next man and manages it as well. So even when it looks like... Um, Kaz are in a dire situation once again when it's a one versus two. They still manage to come out on top. They still manage to put something on the board and further their lead ever so slightly. One round in it at the moment as we head towards the later stages of this map. Of this map. And realistically, it's just about will FM come back into it anytime soon because if they win this round or the round after, uh, the round after looking a lot less likely than this round potentially, they're going to be in a great place to close this one out strong. That's crazy stuff, and Shaq, he, he pretty much played Batezilla Gaming, let his teammates go down, he's just casually strutting out, like, do 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 completely unabated, gets himself into the angle, and picks up the two frags as a result. 
super crisp stuff. Robin, he does get the frag, but again, he's one of the first to fall on this Kaz side. And you know, maybe he needs to start thinking about being a little more passive and making sure he's alive to help his teammates out when the retakes come in. Uh, Fry taken down early as well. He's been a dangerous prospect uh, all day, actually. And you know, got to be very careful of him. He's also the first to go down. So you know, good work from Robin managing to take him out of the play in the end. Hudge G looking into the A site. And you know, we've seen this a number of times where the T's go and put someone on short, try and peek into A, and they just have no angle. Because these guys, they get in their positions, they set, and they don't peek, they don't strafe across into uh, kill zones for these AWP scopes. Now, if you're going to keep full mid control, then you can be a little more flexible in the way that you move around the site. But if you're not, then you have to leave it open. And there goes Cryptics and Jacob. You know, first of all, no 3k from Cryptics. So I think it might have been 2k and an assist that he got last time. He was uh, locking things down in the B site. Hudge G gets uh, taken down to uh, oh, only 85 points of health. So nothing too drastic there. Boaster gets one. Has a chance for a second. He's already looking in the right direction at Hudge G. And Hudge G, I don't know how he's uh, managed to stay alive that long. He's getting Dink all over the shot, but Stan is able to pick up Jack, and it swings back again. Seven all. Someone's going to take a slender lead in this half, but it's going to come down to this final round to decide who that is. Yeah, I mean, off the back of the win in the last, it looks like it probably should be FMO. I mean, both teams working with what little they can scrap together. Um, some, no, sorry, not so. Okay, some did have a, a swap. He decided to switch out. Luckily enough, and it's going to be Kaz working with less this time, but already at the beginning, they managed to find more with it. Jack with a 5-7 takes himself down two before he gets picked up. And uh, Boaster with the flashes manages to hold them off for a little while and allows his teammates to get there. So as long as they can play this smart, there's still definitely a chance for Kaz to get into this. all four players over towards the site. But Fry, of course, it's Fry going to be starting things off in the way of FM success as he manages to pick up Jacob. Nothing more going to be lost here if they can help it. They've got the, well, they've got the weapons. They're lacking a little bit in the utility, but they can definitely work on gaining access to this site. And you can already see Hudge He's decided he's going to be going around, pushing through Palace and trying to get some sort of other perspective on the issue. Trying to find some sort of angle they're not expecting. But whilst he's doing that, Boaster's doing more damage. Finds himself some. And leaves it in a two versus three situation. And this is where Hudge has to step up. He lands the nade, but he's not going to be landing any more than that. He's getting tagged down consistently. Robin with the CZ from range manages to clean him up. And leaves just Fry as the last player versus three. Now Fry is going to have to come up huge here. Everything rests on him in this half. If they want the lead, he is going to have to take it. And he's only against players with pistols. So it is still definitely possible. Especially considering the majority of them are on, a, are on half health. Had he thought about it a little bit earlier, switching sites would also have been possible, but at the moment he has to commit, and indeed he does. Finds the first on A. Gets into a position where that bomb can go down, and now, because of that fake, actually has two players in CT that he has to worry about. And does bring the thing home. And Now, Kaz, I think were just a little bit fortunate in there, to be honest. You know, it was uh, a little bit of, as you said, you've got to play it smart. And, you know, what doesn't count as smart is, you know, both pushing out when you've got three players that you're trying to bait into the site, which uh, I think it was Cryptics and uh, Jacob did. You know, Jacob got uh, taken down completely. Cryptics, you know, in the end, he stayed alive long enough to bring the thing home and, and get that final round on the board for Kaz. But you know, I think they would have been wiser just to sit in and wait for the push to come in. Got the round in the end anyway, so all good. No complaints there. And we've got uh, a brief uh, pause coming in. Uh, good half uh, sent to uh, Chuck for his 21 and 6 performance, which was uh, hugely impressive for Kaz and you know kept him in it. Now, let's see what they can do on the T side. This is their map. What kind of strategies have they got for us? Yes, I... Who knows at this point? Really, it's I, it's either team's game, but I feel that on the T side, realistically, looking at the fact that Kaz um, do sort of have their frags concentrated all in one person, they might find some issue. Unless Chak can come up huge in every round, unless he can find his way into sites uh, without losing his life, and as long as as long <laughs> unless he can basically stay alive the entire time, they're potentially going to find some issue. Unless. We see Robin, Jacob, Cryptics, and Boaster step up a little bit, and they are more than capable of that. 
It has to be said. Jaco, if you chuck an AWP in his hand, he's going to be huge. Robin? Already, there's been instances where he has, um, well, single-handedly, potentially, made those plays that have won his team the rounds that they're currently sat on. And in all cases, it'll be interesting to see how all of their team sort of progress throughout this half. FME Sports, on the other hand, they're just going to be trying to hold on to what they have. If they lose this round, then they lose a significant chunk of, um, of the half, as well as the game in general, because they haven't had a great time so far of actually managing to secure these pistols. When you think about it, though, it makes it all the more impressive that they're currently sat on seven, and if they manage to win one finally, maybe that's what it'll take to push them over the edge and allow them to find the, the success on Mirage. Yeah, well, we will just have to see how it unfolds. First round of this second half. We're into the second map of the second best of three of three for the day. All of the seconds uh, firing off as we've got Hudge G. So straight away he gets flashed off and he's going to sit into that ladder room. You know, he's got the silencer, but I think he probably would have given away his position. So what can Neil Zinio do? Well, he's got one straight away. A oh, nice little shot. Jacob, though, he's got one uh, inside the mid-window, so they've got control of that area. Some training back, taking down Jack. So advantage still in favour of FM, 4-3. to three. And that's how the, you'd probably want it to be. But they are defending as best they can. Nielzinho gets one at Lee's Boaster, but the plant is out in the open. So possibly, if he can play the angles, no. Okay, good work from FM. They went on mass game, too many angles to worry about, and they do pick it up. But Kaz... And they've got the bomb plant down. Atal probably going to be looking to force up after this uh, next round. Most likely get himself some AKs. And, you know, even if it goes 9-8 to FM here, Kaz going to be looking to peg that straight back. Yeah, this round really should be one that's just sort of already decided. Kaz not going to be buying too much. There's a few P250s and a deal on Cryptics. Yeah, he can actually goes for the smoke in the end. So that tells you that they might be looking to find a bomb plant more than anything else and you can already see they're spreading themselves out across the map in sort of a default setup with three men taking control of that mid so actually maybe i'm wrong maybe they are well maybe they are going to try and make something of this round as they're in a position where they could quite easily do so it's just what to do what can they try and find for themselves right now it's a whole lot of mid control but not a lot of anything else as song takes that check over towards the eight side and a man on b boaster is tagged down to but six points of health um <laughs> Making a move on either of these sites right now would essentially be suicide, so... It's anybody's guess what they're going to be doing in this round and how they're going to manage to accomplish anything whatsoever. I mean, my best guess at the moment is they're going to try and execute onto the A site, but potentially just going to be shut down as they enter. And well, we'll uh, soon find out. There's no nades up, so boast it. 6 HP hero, won't have to worry, just at this stage, 45 seconds left to go, and Fry gets one straight off the bat, and I just boasted that was a team kill on Cryptics, that is my bad, and that wasn't particularly conducive of their efforts to get into the site, and that was uh, maybe a little too comfortable uh, for FM in the end, but that team killer hasn't done a whole lot, they can still force up those AKs if they want to, Jacob's going to go for the Galil, so maybe a little more of a defensive weapon, can't rely on it quite so much to uh, pick you up those frags on the entry as such. Uh, but, you know, against uh, some of these MP7s, that's not the worst idea, and if they decide to rush, then a bit of Galil spray down isn't necessarily uh, the worst thing to have in your arsenal, and we'll see how that all pans out. But four AKs, they've got head armor all round, so now they're going to be able to counter and take a headshot or two from these onrushing MP7s if they want to go for it. Someone's up close, Neil Zinio. So, oh, Robin, he's looking at him, but we've got the benefit of X-ray from the spectator standpoint. And here it comes now, the spray's coming in, and Robin gets one. Boaster coming out from the outs, but there's only so much he can do, and now Jacob steps up. Jacob, though, he's the last player left alive against two catch and nade as well. He's down to 28 points of health, so it's not going to take too much attention uh, to catch him. Grabs the bomb. Maybe going to be thinking along the same kind of lines. Can I move myself across to B? Or can I you know, draw these guys over in that direction and then hit back onto the A site? Get yourself a plant. You know, get 800 bucks in the bank, which will help their cause just a little bit going forward because this has been an expensive round uh, for all of them and see what you can do from there. Can you live to fight another day? Well, no, he went mid. Straight out into the open. Stands able to pick up really quickly and FM take themselves uh, to a 10-8 lead. And, you know, those last two rounds, they felt just a little bit too comfortable for FM. 
Indeed they did. Maybe there's a chance we're going to be seeing them on their CT side then really step out ahead here. <laughs> the thing that worries me, or the thing that sort of annoyed me about the last round is that situation Jacob's in is always the situation where you see people play themselves. You know, they always overthink what they're doing or they outplay themselves and put them in a position where the other team can do the damage, but maybe FM are just more prepared in this game. You can already see in this round, they're starting to pick up the pace again. Four frags in a matter of seconds and it's Jacob left as the last man alive once more. This time though, no bomb. No nothing, just a P250 in the dream and it's not going to be happening. Hud's G shuts him down. FM progressed to 11 and despite the fact that was an Antico, it was again insanely comfortable. A round that they were never in any sort of doubt about winning. A round where there was no real even um, doubt that they'd survive with five players alive and... I don't know, if this round doesn't go well for Kaz, then maybe we've found the pattern that's going to be sticking through the rest of the game. Maybe FM are just going to be coming out on top in a big way here. And that would be uh, an interesting dynamic, and, and what a way for Kaz. You know, you kind of look at FM, selecting overpass, maybe not performing as well as you would have expected uh, on that map. And you know, maybe we're going to see the same thing from Kaz on their pick, which would be a surprise and a half. But you, know, you never know, and they've got plenty of players on this team that can influence things uh, for the better. So we have to see what happens with it. Neil Zinio with the AWP up. Let's see where he's going to be taking that weapon. And he is currently over towards B from the kitchen, locking that one down. So, you know, a chance for FM to maybe be a little more aggressive out of the B if they want to. And they may well think about that. Not something you'd expect from them. Some, and he's getting peaky. And, and we saw that from him yesterday. He sometimes likes to get a bit too aggressive on other maps. And, you know, if you're going to do that, maybe you have to do that as part of the uh, team process as such. Uh, Neil Zinio then... Still with the AWP in hand, looking towards the apartments, but no attention yet. 40 seconds uh, there or thereabouts left to go on the clock. Uh, Kaz have 5-4 to four advantage as they look towards this A site. And, and maybe this is going to work a little better for them. Got uh, that fry over towards the fireboxes, I think it might be. Now stand over towards the CT steps. A fairly standard setup coming in. And the flash is uh, flying. Uh, Molotov is maybe not the most effective from Chak, but he's able to pick up a frag. And so is Jacob. And Robin makes light work of Hudge G. It's such a tough spot to be pushing in through that window. It slows you down uh, getting into the back so much, having to crouch through that, you know, unless you've got a clear run through, you're pretty much going to go down more often than not unless you're dealing with a very weak player and there is no one of that kind of calibre on either one of these two teams as Kaz get themselves uh, back into things. 11 to 9 is uh, FM's advantage and they can, with some drops, still go for a buy, but... You know, with all these drops, rebuys, etc. going for the utility, it's going to, uh, well, not make them completely broke, but it's going to put a nice dent in the finances. Yeah, it's going to put them in a position where losing too many players is still going to be an extremely damaging thing and something they do have to worry about in this round. So not only are they going to want to win it, they're going to want to win it with three players alive. And that's always sort of a difficult qualifier to put on things, especially as um, Kaz showed us in the last round. They are definitely still threatening. If they catch you in the right situation, they're going to be doing damage and they're going to be doing it well. It is just all about that right situation at the moment. Kaz going for what they've gone for in many rounds before and just establishing that, st well, standard setup, establishing their default where they send three guys mid and one guy to either site. Boaster again, taking it maybe a little bit too aggressive on B. You can already see he's lost a little bit of health, but he's going to be fine for the most part. Robin. I'm wondering if here he's going to be going aggressive into window, and if he does, there's a good chance to find the frag onto Neil Zeno. Even without diving through, he still is going to manage to put some damage down and scare him off the angle. So that is mid essentially kept there. Uh, wherever they want to be, wherever they want to be heading from this point forwards, they should have a fairly clear path to get there. And at the moment, I'd suggest that's probably going to be B. We see them grouping up around that area. We see Chat coming in towards the A site to try and draw some of that attention away, and both are going to be seeing what he can do with the push. Starts it off, doesn't manage to find a stand, and now it's up to the men on site to deal with those coming through short, and they do so perfectly. All frags coming in as they need to. FM surviving with four players left alive, and realistically, a worrying shutdown for Kaz. Had Boaster been a, a second quicker, had he swung around and aimed at the people on site as opposed to being careful, potentially it could have gone the other way, but coming off the back of a victory, coming off the back of a round that looked pretty good for Kaz, that's devastating. It is, and I feel like they could have worked off of Chak a little more, because as soon as he got that frag over towards the A, he could have thrown a proper fake in that direction. But as soon as that happened, 
flick across the boaster and he's firing off shots. Managed to miss them actually and you know completely gave away his position and the players on B didn't even flinch. They didn't make a move over towards the A site. They felt no threat there. And as a result, they were well and truly bedded in, ready to deal with that B split. So I think maybe they could have used a little bit more patience. And all it would have taken is another three, four seconds, uh, maybe a little longer for Chuck to throw some utility in and to really um, sort of hammer home that A fake. But, you know, we've got the advantage of seeing everything unfold. And you know, maybe for these guys, not so much. It's tough to figure out what your teammates doing across the map unless you're... You know, flooding your voice comms with literally everything that you're doing. But this is looking uh, pretty solid for FM. Again, there's trades going around. And, oh, okay, Robin. So he's got a couple of frags now. And they can try and work from this one. They've got Boaster coming out of the apps. They can uh, get hold of Fry while his position uh, will have been given away. He's down to low HP. He's down to 10. But they need to be making these frags. And Fry's got his second taken Boaster as well. So he steps out of the apartments. I think they always knew where Boaster was coming from. And, you know, the sound gave it away as soon as he tried to miss. And Robin has the chance to spam through the wood and does eventually grab Fry. But how many bullets did he have to commit? Needs the reload. 20 seconds. Stanley picks it up. Great information from his teammate, I am sure, as to where that was coming from. Gave him the advantage. That extra split seconds to go and get a shot on Robin. And it is 13 to 9. So for Kaz. You know, again, they find themselves poor. They can't buy anything other than upgraded pistols, and they're going to have to just go with it. Yeah, it looks like it's going to be a fast play towards B initially. I mean, a couple of players splitting off to head towards mid and do sort of other things, but the bomb goes where it goes, and now actually potentially looking to move elsewhere, falling back a little bit as Robin aggresses. Um, <laughs> Robin and Boaster again, trying to see what they can do in in terms of a presence in the B-Apps, but they're not going to be finding anything early on, and they don't seem to be able to find anything anywhere across the map at the moment. Anytime they sort of get a push through, they get shut down quickly. And it's just another one of those rounds where they can't really get within range with the pistols to make anything work. You need to be at a certain distance to find the shots. And if you can't make it there, you're going to be finding problems. Robin finally manages to grab himself a frag. It's just a question of is it too little, too late, and indeed it would seem that it is. You can't make anything of it. It just is what it is. It's a single solitary frag on some. It's a little bit of money, it's a little bit of economic damage, but... It's not really good enough at this point. Cryptix is going to be left as the last man alive with a P250 in hand and a lot to do, and there's four people watching for him, so... His life almost guaranteed over at this point. If you're coming up against Fry, you're going to be worried about that a little bit more than most. 14 rounds to FM. Now Kaz still stuck sitting at 9 and they've only managed to get one on their T side so far. That's a worrying prospect. They've managed to get one on their T side so far and one bomb plant throughout the entirety of this half. And FM are really drawing it close at the moment. If they don't step up their game soon, Kaz are going to find that everything is over and everything has slipped away from them and they're getting to that point now. This is a buy but they've put everything they have into it. They've got $100 left on the majority of their players at the most. And... You take into account that if they don't get the bomb plot, they're going to be what? Oh, the exact numbers escape me, but they're going to have enough money to maybe buy themselves some SMGs, maybe a little. But nothing in terms of utility and nothing in terms of getting the full buy up. It's, it's a worrying thing, and it's one of those rounds they're going to have to win if they want any chance at this, because otherwise they've got a lot to make up, and they're not going to be allowed to even have one mistake in that time. No, exactly right. And... Um... Yeah, for Kaz, have been getting themselves in positions they've been making some early picks and you know, been getting at least access to the site. But as he picks up only one bomb plant and Robin, so he's got a frag on Neil Zinio again. You now Kaz get the early advantage, but Robin's down to such low HP that you know it's going to be one nade or you know, one spam through a box or, or something like that that's going to take him out. So already good damage coming in from Neil Zinio and and trying to figure out where this is going to come from. And there's some. So he straight away picks up Robin. That's a trade. Shaq coming out of apartments. But you feel like even when they get a bit of control on the site, it's the retake which comes in so fast and they're not messing around with it. It is going to be another plant. And there's Fry going down. So you know, maybe this is their chance. Maybe there's a fight in the old dog. Yeah, Stan tries to come in from behind. It does take down Shaq. So that's going to open things up. But they know where he's going to be coming from. And 
you know, the other angle is fairly uh, ineffective, perhaps. Jake can catch it, and it's not from a teammate this time. And, you know, massive overkill headshot through the box from Hudge G with the AWP. Didn't need to do that, but it's more than enough. And, you know, 2v2, this is a winnable situation. Maybe Hudge G could just play the body cover, and he does. He takes out both of the players. It's a defuse coming in. Yes, Stan went on it straight away. And, you know, even if Hudge G went down, he might have uh, still have done enough to help that diffuse come in. FM get themselves a draw guaranteed and we are, I would suggest, almost definitely going to see a third map here. I mean, it wouldn't shock me. At this point, Kaz are in such an awful position. They get the bomb plant, so that does facilitate the buy-up in this round. But it is so far from perfect. They have the AKs, yes. Boaster is going to be on the Galil. Again, not great, but still manageable. The issue is the nades. Already, what, one minute, 40 left on the clock and they're down to a single smoke and one Molotov and... Realistically, they've not even had a chance to start to execute yet. All they've used that for is a little bit of MIG control and getting one guy out partially of, well, part of the way towards A side. So, if FM do get the rotates through, if they do decide that they're going to be moving more towards the A side and trying to counter whatever Kaz throw at them, if that's what ends up happening, then they're going to be in a great position to do so. And already, Neil Zeno steps up. He finds Chak with ease, rips his head off, and puts FM in a nice place. Jacob, though, going to be coming back in, doing what he can for his team. Cats want to win this, and Jacob's making it possible. Two frags in a row, and it's going to be Stan and Hud's G left as the last two players alive. Stan does come up into T-Sport. He's spamming through the box. He thinks he knows where it is, but instead he's going to encounter Boaster and lose his head. Now just Hud's G, the man with the AWP, and he is not going to be in any place to go for this whatsoever. He has the AWP, so he just wants to fall back, hold on to what he's, well, hold on to what he's in possession of at the moment, hold on to the utility, hold on to the big green gun, hold on to his armor, and hide until the next round. And really, the only question to ask is, are Kaz going to allow him to do that? Are Kaz happy to go, yep, we don't want to lose any more of our players, we're already pretty low on economy, let's just leave it, or are they going to go, you know what, actually, we're going to be in a much better position if we can just rip to shreds everything that FM hold right now. Oh, that's an interesting question. Oh, maybe, maybe it's on, it's on. Oh, no, Boaster. Bro. So, uh, yeah, Hudge G. He has to fight for it, but uh, it kind of wrestles with Boaster. It's like something out of the playground with those two uh, in that little battle. But he does uh, live to fight another day uh, with that AWP. And, you know, he's trading that up. Uh, was that Scout a mistake by or has he dropped that to Neil Zinio? Uh, it's a good question. At the moment, it's looking like it might have been a little bit of a mistake because Neil Zinio is still just holding on to a CZ. Okay. But yeah, as you point out, it's a little bit of a, a little bit of a choppy bite right in this round. They're not working with much and they're seeing what they can get done right off the back. And unfortunately, it's... Well, right off the bat, rather. And unfortunately, it's not going to be a whole lot. Fry drops immediately. Stanley going to be in a very advanced position and actually manages to make it work. So the one-for-one -one trade at least coming through. Neil Zeno going to be allowed to get a weapon off the back of that. It's just what they do now. Where they go from here and how they how they orchestrate the rest of their defense. Because currently it's a 2-2 split, which is about the best you can do with four people. But if Kaz decide to fold on a site, then holding on to it is going to be insanely difficult. And the retake is probably also not going to be the most viable option. But Hudson is going to be putting... FM back in control as he takes out Robin Chak, doing what he can to get it back into his team's favor as he manages to find the headshot. And now it is just going to be who goes where and how they get their cads creeping their way towards mid at the moment. That to me screams indecisiveness. It screams that they don't know quite where they're going at this point and they're still trying to make their minds up. Obviously, it leaves a lot of options open, but it's also an exposed area. It's somewhere that to push a site from, you have to give your position away. You have to allow people to see you. And unfortunately, that's going to cause them all sorts of issues. They flash the people on a site, which allows them to push through short, but it gives exactly where they're going to the enemies. FM should start the rotate now. They should be completely ready, and Stanley should be having the calls going. There's people coming your way. Be prepared. But unfortunately, he can't be prepared for two people either side of him, and so he is going to be losing his life to Jacob. Three versus two. FM on the retake, trying to close it out here, but Kaz looking like they might just chuck a third round up in the second half. Yeah, well, possibly. It's going to be tough for these two guys to try and bring it home to uh, very experienced campaigners, but it feels like Neil kind of goes uh, solo. I don't know if that was the plan, so they could get away and save the uh, AWP, or if there's just a bit of uh, indecision between the two of them as to whether to go for it or not, or not quite what the plan was there, but you know the bottom line of it is that Hodge G does escape uh, with the AWP in hand again, ready to go. And Kaz 
set themselves uh, these are four rounds away from a potential overtime, but now uh, they have got no margin for error whatsoever. As we have a little look at the buy, and it's there isn't going to be much of a buy coming in for FM, but they do have that one singular orb. So I guess their thought process might be where can we put this where it can make a difference? So it's either going to be gambling on a site or maybe put out into mid, try and get the mid control locked down and change their angles. Yeah, both viable options for different reasons. And at the moment, it looks like they're going for sort of the hybrid between the two of them. They've got a nice gene connector early on, so you can look out for anybody trying to push their way down mid. And then after that, they leave him on the A side of the defense, and that's going to be the perfect place to play, as it's exactly where the push is coming in from. It's just what he can do against it at this point. He's going to be on ticket move, seeing if he can find the shots, but unfortunately, he's the first to drop. Cryptic's doing a great job finding himself two and making it three as well. Neil Zinho there going down and leaving just Stanley with a 5-7 as the last man left alive. Anything to do with this one is going to be a help, but unfortunately nothing's going to be easy. And he doesn't even manage to find one, so it's going to be a clean round for Kaz there as they put their 12th on the board. And, um, well, a slightly more pressing issue for FM to close this one out. Kaz are taking it close. Every round that FM lose at this point, Kaz are gaining two for him. If, the, if FM managed to lose this one, we're going to be seeing 14-15, and we're going to be seeing the game going to 30 rounds, most likely. Well, at this rate, yeah, FM back on a full buy. But you can guarantee that's uh, fairly fragile. Oh, a possible early commitment on short from Stan. I might be tempted to go and push him, and you know, if he does decide to walk out when he's got a player in ladder room, will he have heard? I uh, probably will have heard that ladder now, actually, and, and that does mean that they can get some kind of mid control if they want, if they want to uh, take hold of that window. And like a, a capture the flag kind of deal. But for Count Strike, I don't really know where I'm going with that, but you know, a minute left to go on the clock, and, and second map of this uh, best of three. Now, FM so close to taking it to a third map. Just need one solitary round back up on the buy. 50 seconds on the clock. That's probably looking back towards the A. See if they can get themselves in there. They have made a number of picks from out of that apartments area. And they just have the upper hand there for the most part this time. No one from FM committing. And Neil Zinho, he's able to pick up Robin. So this is possibly where it starts to fall apart. Can FM take it to a third map? No, track goes huge. Nade and a spray down as well. I don't quite know how he managed to pull both of those off, but he did. Neil Zinho, though, he's going huge. He's got three as the bomb does get planted. 3v2 retake, and it is possible for Kaz just to wait this thing out and live to fight another day if they're not careful. Chat, look, so as he gets spotted in the fireboxes, they're going to be dealing with him as best they can. He hasn't got too much he said to worry about, and he does peek out, takes down Neil Zinho. So, you know, maybe this isn't over. Stan, though, he comes in. Pins the movement. He's got to get on the move. Hud's G manages to find Chak's head through the box. Diffuse comes in. GG's are exchanged and we are going to be seeing map number three.